So when the first rushes came in, the contrast ratio on a lot of the shots is, is massive in, in a 709 or a standard dynamic range environment. Um, you think, well, there go the highlights, there go the shadows. And then you start grading the material and everything came back. It's, it's a jump, I'll admit. Um, there is, there, you know, obviously the ISOs have been bumped up in both instances, so it does, uh, it enables me to shoot a higher speed if needs be in low, low light levels, which is something that wasn't really an option before. So, so that for me essentially is the, is the big gain. The high ISO modes, we've shot 3200, as well as our base of 800. Um, there is a very small difference that I can see between the ISO modes, but they're incredibly clean. The colour rendition of the camera has been incredibly natural. With the Venice towards the end as well, and now especially this camera, the colour rendition is really beautiful. Well, what's interesting here is that we've, you know, this is this is the first time I've ever used that larger sensor, the 8.6K. The results are, I think, you know, quite astonishing in the sense that it's like the Venice Part One, as it were. Uh, it was that anyway. It was fantastic. And we, we were lucky enough to get some anamorphic lenses that will really, so, you know, for the full cinematic effect, that really utilise that whole sensor. Yeah, I think, you know, like, I, I find 6K is more than enough much of the time, especially if, you know, I like to, lately have been framing in two to one aspect ratio quite a bit. You know, I, I, they would, I'm, Viz effects are always going to ask for more resolution. They'd be very happy with it, I know really loved that it was 6K. I mean, they would have preferred 8K. XOCNXT is obviously the, the highest format that you can shoot, and it is gorgeous to work with. Um, you get access to every single piece of data that the camera captures and as a colorist it makes your life a whole heap easier. Um, internal recording is really important, um, you know, just not having to run any cables and so on and so forth and again not having that, that extra recorder on the back. Um, you know, shortens the profile. That that actually allowed me to do shots in a. You know, that's 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 not a big vehicle we were in, and and we could fit in there comfortably, even with some of the uh, camera assistance bells and whistles attached to it. Um, well, you know, if you get you get this last-minute inspirations about, well, I want I want I want I want the background more out of focus, or I want I want to, the background more in focus, or whatever. And because of the dynamic range of the camera, and 
you know, if you're using fast lenses, and I do like the Zeiss Supremes because they're, you know, T1.5. Whereas normally on set, having adding or subtracting an ND would be a semi-time consuming process that would annoy both actors and directors if it's the last second. And with this camera, I mean, we all, uh, all the DPs I know, love the, the built-in NDs on this camera. If I was working with a, with a version two, um, I'd want a Rialto for it as soon as I could. I mean, what a difference. It's a much more compact package within the gimbal. You know, the weight itself, I can keep the whole gimbal down to under 15 kilos. That was, that really did bring a smile to my face. That was lovely to see. And it's testament to Rob as well that he's shooting in such an aggressive way that in most circumstances you'd expect the camera to break. So it's, the camera's getting a really, really heavy workout. So if it can survive what Rob's doing to it in the environments it's doing and the footage looks as good as I'm seeing it, then you're going to have a field day as a cinematographer because it's going to solve so many of the problems that you run up against. The camera really helps that, it does. It really helps me to sort of move fast, make those decisions and know that I'm going to get the details that I need.